people can't find love because they're not actually looking for love. They're looking for something else that they call love, but isn't. Love is not attractive. Love is not fun. Love is not romantic. Love is a hard, transformative crucible associated with spiritual development. As I've mentioned before, it's the humiliated self exultant. Love is changing the bedpan. Love is staying with someone when they're down and out. Love is sacrifice without the hope of reward. Do you understand? Like, how many people today, when they say they're looking for love, mean they're looking for someone whose needs they can indefinitely put ahead of their own? How many mean by this that they want to find someone whom they can sacrifice their own desires so that this other person's can be fulfilled? Like, very, very few, right? When my wife and I were struggling in our marriage, I hated hearing the advice, you just need to communicate more. Anybody ever heard that? You just need to communicate more. No, we were communicating and it was only making things worse because more of the wrong type of communication actually destroys your relationship faster. You don't need more communication, you need effective communication. There's a big difference. More communication doesn't equal more comprehension, does it? We were stuck in a destructive cycle. Criticize, defend, accuse, invalidate, blame, shut down. We couldn't see our part because we were too busy playing find the bad guy. The truth is anyone can communicate more, but the couples that make it learn how to listen to understand more. The couples that make it are curious and mutually respectful more. They can take accountability and say the words, I'm sorry, and then mean it enough to change hurtful behavior. Hey guys, it's Holly Davis here, and I'm a divorce lawyer here in Austin, Texas. I want to break down a big fat lie for you guys. And that big fat lie is that love is easy and that marriages are just like these fairy tales. Because I get a lot of people that come into my office and they're dealing with probably decades worth of problems in their marriage. And I think it's important for you to know that myth that love is supposed to be easy. And before you get to my office and before you talk to a divorce lawyer, you should know this because if you realize that love is a two-way street, even if you've been treated terribly, there are some things that you've been doing as well that you can take accountability for. When you realize that love is messy and it's never 50-50, sometimes someone's pulling 80% of the weight and the other person's doing 20, other weeks and years it's flipped, if you know that and you expect that, that might help you look at some of the challenges that you have in your relationship in a slightly different light. My name is Justine Williams. My name is Jaylee Williams. I started shooting about two and a half years ago when I was nine. <laughs> my first sh ever shooting a gun was when I was three years old. And I got my first pistol when I was 10 years old. <laughs> when I very first shot a match, they thought I was so cute, precious. Oh, you're so cute! Guns in little girls' hands. It's so weird. Why do I sin? And I'll tell you why you sin. Because sin makes promises to you and you believe them. 
Sin promises to be better, longer, deeper, sweeter, more satisfying. And to the degree that we are deceived by those promises, we sin. Nobody sins out of duty. Nobody gets up in the morning and says, I've got an obligation, I've got to sin some today. Nobody sins out of duty. We sin out of pleasure seeking. The only reason we opt for a sinful action is because the devil and our own nature has promised us that action will produce pleasure, satisfaction, fame, whatever, you, whatever your idol happens to be, it will succeed. The only way the power of sin can be broken is by the presence and the promise of a superior pleasure.